Are your creatinine levels elevated on a lab test? Or have you had this in the past? And are you concerned that you have kidney disease? Or is your physician or healthcare provider concerned about this? This is one of the most popular and common medical issues that I work up every single day with my patients. And this one is not so easy, have to be very careful. And this is for healthcare providers too, internal medicine doctors, primary care doctors that do this, even endocrinologists that are involved with hormones and any other type of nurse practitioner or mid-level practitioner all around America and the world now. Um, nephrology doctors, we're gonna talk about kidney disease today and how to differentiate on an estimation lab test, are your kidneys healthy or not and what to do. It's very important. I've laid out my research here and I'd like to present this very succinctly to you. Uh, nephrologists certainly do this all day long. When we don't, as a primary care doctor, internist, we don't like a number, we send it to an expert, right? That's what we do. So I have to deal with this all the time because I have a population of people that are not just doing steroids and pads, but they're very muscular. And some of them are drug free and they just are big and they have muscles and that affects the test. Crash. Right off the bat, what do you have? I like to always present the data to you guys. So where I get my research from is the National Institute of Diabetes and Digestive and Kidney Diseases from the NIH. This is talking about estimated glomerular filtration rates, very important. And also I have, of course, the National Kidney Foundation. We have some, uh, some of their data. You can get this right on Google. So right off the bat, it's amazing that when you look at someone's labs, metabolic panel, comprehensive metabolic panel, or basic metabolic panel. When I say these things, guys, get the comprehensive metabolic, get a basic lab, get, this is looking at kidney and liver function, right? Apart from the red blood cells, platelets, and the whole blood stuff, and apart from other studies. So you have to understand that this is a person getting blood drawn, and there, over the years, have been equations and estimations for how to determine kidney function. So the two most common ones are creatinine based estimation kidney function formulas. The old fashioned one, and I remember this back when I was training 20 years ago, was the Kalkoff Galt formulation, which is more inaccurate and no longer used. And again, guys all over the world, you have to pay attention. You have to make sure that your lab is a standardized lab with the World Health Organization to understand these issues right here. And again, the references I made, you could check these out to make sure that they're up to the standard of care. So the two equations that are utilized in the world are the modification of diet in renal disease, MDRD, study equation, and the chronic disease epidemiological collaboration equation for someone that is potentially has kidney disease. Now, this is for anyone 18 and above, and this is for people that have, of course, hypertension, diabetes, dyslipidemia, getting older, medical issues, on medicines, and we have to make a determination on their kidney function. So those are the two equations that are used to estimate your kidney function. You're gonna see this, you guys will see it, that little EGFR, right? You'll see that and you'll see that it's inversely related to your creatinine level. Understand that there's creatinine levels that are on labs versus creatine monohydrate, which is a sports supplement and of course, this all relates to a, uh, it's a metabolite from muscle tissue. So these equations are not perfect, okay? I think everyone knows that and that's where I'm headed with this. So you go for your labs, you get your labs 
and it looks like your creatinine levels are elevated, therefore your estimated GFR is down. And your doctor or yourself now, because everything is moving to do it yourself, is concerning. It looks like your kidney function is not doing well. Your creatinine is 1.6, your 1.5, 1.9, maybe 2.0 or even higher. And therefore, the estimation is going to be low. Everyone's looking at that number, researching it, and getting very worried. What's going on? When should you not be utilizing a creatinine-based estimation equation, as I mentioned, the MDRD or the CKD EPI. Okay, this is technical stuff, you guys. Please put up with this for the doctors and to always make sure we're evidence-based. So when should you not? And this is for doctors to understand this. So right here from the NIH, Persons with extreme muscle mass, body, it says bodybuilders, and diet includes, but is not limited to individuals who are amputees because they have less muscle mass. So paraplegics because they have less muscle mass. Bodybuilders or someone who is obese or someone who has neuromuscular wasting disorder or any type of cachectic disorder where they're having muscle wasting. Also is amazing is that the diet is imperative. So meat eaters, it's going to cause potential false issue and elevation of your levels and therefore looking like your kidney function may be doing poorly. So people that are meat eaters, so many of you guys, paleo, keto, we know that if you're doing that kind of diet, you're relying on meat. And that will have effects on this right here. I didn't realize in the research that I looked at how substantial it really is. So imagine you're muscular and you're eating meat. You're going to see an elevation. I see it all the time. So what to do? What to do before you end up seeing a doctor? Because I know you guys want to understand this all yourself. So here's what you should do. Redo the test. Make sure it's an accurate test. Make sure it is a test that is a gold standard, as I said, with these estimated equations. Research this. And you're going to repeat the test. Hydrate yourself. Every, sometimes people are just not hydrated, and that's going to have effect. Do not take creatine monohydrate supplements. I love the stuff too, guys. So, But it's going to affect a false positive. So many times when I see a patient, a new guy coming in, and I do my history and physical, and I see the creatinine 1, 4, 1, 5 or so, and I say, or 1, 6. And if we have a baseline, it's really nice to compare to. And I say, so are you taking supplement? Oh, of course, I take pre-workout, doc. Boom, right there. If the doctor only asked that question, it would alleviate so much stress and so much worrying and so much waste of resources. So understand that. Diets, understand your diet. Maybe if you're going for this blood test, back off on so much of the red meat to stop the sports supplement, they say three days. I sometimes say, give it a whole week. Hydrate, okay? Compare, compare, compare. Get baseline studies. You must have baseline studies. Make sure it's apples to apples and you have the proper equations and you're going to a very good lab. Next, if you are not sure and you really want to see this gold standard, it's called Cystatin C, guys. Cystatin C, okay? This is National Kidney Foundation. Put it in Google. Cystatin C. You could read right here this document. This is incredible because the Cystatin C has been out there for years. We're using it more. Caregivers like us, instead of just sending patients to nephrologists and being done with it, we're taking some more responsibility. Even a primary care doctor like me, I'm ordering this more to differentiate. Is it kidney disease or is it just muscle mass or diet or, or hydration issue? So cystatin C is a protein that's produced by all cells of the body, and it can be much more accurate for truly diagnosing renal function versus the estimation based on the creatinine-based equations in someone who's very muscular and even the diet. So that's a secret right there. It's so important to know that. Next, you want to check a urine analysis because Look at the associations of disease. If you look at the kidney, especially my FSGS guys, 
the steroid using guys that have genetics for their hypertensive, their young protein, NSAIDs, and we see in the urinalysis trace protein or more, one plus, two plus, three plus protein. You put that together. So you want to get a urinalysis. You want to check your blood pressure. You want to look for other metabolic issues and diabetes and pre-diabetes, check glucose levels. That's usually fixed in with the metabolic panel. It's usually all together. And hemoglobin A1C, which is going to give you that really uh, good look at the last 90 to 120 days of how your 24-7 sugars have been controlled. Every person that's pre-diabetic or diabetic in the world has to know this and probably does know this. Next, if you want to go further, you've done all this, you've repeated it, you've checked it, it's stable, you've run a cystatin C. This is incredible stuff, guys. It's all do-it-yourself now. I'm here to guide you. That's my app. It's going to come out with this and more directly for you men. You can, of course, always go to a nephrologist. They're going to get renal, renal ultrasound. They're going, to, they're going to do that, renal ultrasonography. And they may do a 24-hour urine collection to get a more direct estimation of your kidney function. And you then want to understand other medicines that can classically cause false elevations, ACE inhibitors, ARBs, diuretics, NSAIDs, a whole bunch of other medicines, a whole bunch of other medical issues, guys. So that's my presentation, how to differentiate when you have an elevated lab value that looks like your kidneys aren't doing well. This is exactly how you should work it up. Thank you so much, guys. Hope you understood this. I want to get so many questions. Any men that have been through this workup and know this workup or, or are learning this workup or you have any concerns at all, let's get the comments. This is the platform for everyone to learn. Thank you so much, gentlemen.